Hello everyone, before we start working I wanted to show you this extremely cool game It's called Build A Way And it has a lot of great features uh, I wanted to point out its design and all these animations, look at those jumping houses And uh, the most interesting feature for me was how much money you can earn in such a little amount of time you start your game with literally tens of coins and look at me I now have a few billion coins in upper left corner you can see that I have 95 billion coins so it's very addictive and relaxing it has great music also and some of its features is that you can upgrade your building so you get even more money or actually those coins and you can add power to them so they produce coins quicker and there's a whole lot of other features I hadn't even discovered all of them yet so you you'll have to check it for your plate and try now let's go to work Okay, now we'll try uh, to draw this uh, epicyclic gear reducer in SOLIDWORKS. It consists of four parts. Uh, first is uh, fixed gear and this casing. Second is planet carrier, which is actually the input of this reducer. And it moves those planet gears around. And uh, planet gears are third part. And the output is this bevel gear and uh, this gear, this helical gear up here. So when we turn this input gear, the output gear is turned at different gear ratio. So first thing we need to do is uh, create a create gears. So I'll open this program again. We'll do that in program called Gear Tracks. This is a great program. Uh, it allows, it creates our life much easier and because we do not need to draw every in those teeth complex spirals. Uh, so we just enter this bevel gears menu and um, at bevel type we choose the uh, kinetics true spiral. Uh, now we change, I'm gonna do this project in metric, not in inches, so if we're using metric we do not set diametral pitch or module, we just uh, set circular pitch, which will be 20 millimeters. Uh, circular pitch is arc, arc length between two teeth, so arc length between these two teeth will be 20 millimeters. So that way you can calculate the diameter of uh, diameter of this gear and you can calculate the diameter um, so spiral angle will change to 25 degrees so spiral angle is angle of these two three you can see here mm, sl uh, those lines which represent that angle uh, also will change the hand of spiral to left that will change it from right to left and the pressure angle will be will kept at 20 will be kept at 20 degrees pressure angle defines the uh, tooth shape also we'll set that pinion has 16 gear has 20 teeth all of these numbers are calculated for us and backlash will be 0.5 millimeters for both gear and pinion uh, one of the most important measurements, dimensions in this project will be this angle, pitch angle sum, which will equal to 19 plus 18.2 degrees, that will be 108.2 degrees, and it makes, uh, makes possible that uh, these two planet gear engage with the upper output. Output gear, which has only 10 teeth and the this fixed gear has so on the dimensions that we also need to set our face width, web thickness, and crown. Face width is the length of tooth, 
so uh, length between a crown and toe crown is this edge here I'll show it on the model crown is this part of teeth and toe is this part so face width is the length between these two so we'll set it to 20 millimeters and it will be 20 millimeters for all gears we create or all uh, bevel gears also web thickness will be for pinion it will be set to 25 millimeters and for gear it will be set to 20 millimeters and web thickness uh, represents the distance between this surface and this surface also we need to set crown to back as i said this part is called crown and this is back so crown to back will be distance from these two uh, points or planes containing this so crown to back for pinion will be 15 millimeters and for gear it will be 20 millimeters now we can inspect our gears before we draw them it looks good to me uh, also we can uh, adjust the hub mounting and bore diameter we'll set bore diameter to zero because we are going to create to change these gears in SOLIDWORKS and now we can choose to create in CAD both models and assembly or both models only we are going to create both models only because we have assembly created already and we'll leave uh, the tooth pattern at maximum and number of sketches for tooth at 8 it's by default and now we just click creating CAD and watch how it automatically draws uh, gears for us uh, this is I believe pinion and what it does it uh, creates a profile of gear and then just revolves it and the hardest job this program does is calculates all these points uh, in those eight sketches for the spiral teeth and just creates a loft between those and creates a teeth and then with a circular pattern creates all the teeth and on the end it creates a hole but we set hole to zero so it shouldn't create it and it also creates some construction geometries that will be useful for us later uh, now how we are going to use this as parts in our assembly we're just going to insert them so I have created an assembly called, called project in which we are going to import this but first to save them again when we uh, start working on the uh, third, ge third gear which is the output be bevel gear we are going to create just that gear not the pinion for that gear so this is done and we just go to save as and save it to our folder this is the fixed gear I'm going to save it now exit this part and then save the planet gear in same folder and exit that too and now we need to create this small gear here so we are going to leave planet gear as a pinion and just change gear to 10 teeth because that's the number of teeth of this output gear so if we change the gear and pinion uh, pinion to be a output gear and gear to be planet gear we need we would need to change this handle spiral to enable these two gears to engage and we also need to uh, change uh, the web thickness and crown to back the web thickness will be 24 millimeters and crown to back will be 10 millimeters in this case so we can inspect again before we create anything it looks good so we need to create only uh, gear now 
because we already have the pinion. Pinion is actually our planet gear. So we just need to wait for it to create this these eight sketches and then tooth. After that we'll start working with the uh, part called main here. It will be this gear. Just to turn this off. Not turn it, suppress it. Uh, it consists of the largest bevel gear and the holder for this uh, holder of output shaft. What we need to do is create this hole, create this cone with these holes, this largest hole, uh, this mounting and upper holding it hole. So let's check if it's done. Yes, it is. So now save this as output gear one. And we also need to create a so-called output gear two, which is this small helical gear. Uh, for that gear, we uh, enter this poor helical menu and I won't go in much detail with this setup but uh, we'll leave most of the things um, on default by default and just change this to metric make a gear uh, having six teeth because we need a gear of six teeth here and uh, make the helical angle 25 degrees and make a pitch diameter which is um, diameter of a diameter on the middle of the on the middle of tooth just let me show you that a little bit better like this is this central diameter is that pitch diameter I believe so we'll make it 25 millimeters also we'll set this hole to zero again okay great now we just creating CAD uh, this gear on This should be much faster because the geometry of this is much simpler. Okay. Again, we just save as output gear two. And now we can start working on our assembly. Okay, just let me close this and close these gear tracks and open our project and open project assembly all right so I actually left some parts in here, but we are going to import them again. So uh, go to insert components and then browse, browse for all the gears. Open. And now we just place them in random places and we'll suppress. All except fixed gear uh, which will now start editing so first thing we need to do is on the right plane before everything I need to uh, explain you some of the shortcuts I'll be using in SolidWorks so I use this mouse gesture wheel uh, which you can customize under uh, by pressing right click on this menu and going to customize 
and then you have the small gestures you can search for any tool or feature you want for example a sketch uh, you can see that insert sketch is set to uh, right mouse and move down uh, for part editing and in sketch editing it's also on the same place so i'll explain it on the go what's where and how it works so first thing we select a right plane and i have a shortcut for starting a sketch just by moving my mouse down while holding right click so i don't need to move my mouse all the way to this button every time i need it also in the sketch it's a little bit different now i have for example now we need line and it's on the upper left side of my mouse gesture wheel so we'll draw uh, the shape we need to revolve cut from this part okay i created some small line here accidentally now uh, smart dimension is on right hold up on my in my solidworks so this dimension needs to be five millimeters and this angle needs to be 45 degrees okay also i would like to set This input dimension value enables you to uh, input value just when you click it opens this small window and it makes life a whole lot easier. I actually do not need to set this dimension but I just opened it to show you. Uh, this also needs to be 7.5 and now uh, we need to create our axis which we got from the uh, gear tracks program for us uh, make it collinear with this line so that we can revolve cut this okay and now I exit sketch again just by pulling my mouse down and I have revolved cut shortcut on this wheel by moving it left uh, so for all revolves you are going to use these axes provided by the program uh, gear tracks and we are just going to do this revolved cut Okay, now we need to create a cone in the middle. So we'll start by opening sketch on the right plane. I hope that you're getting familiar with those my shortcuts. Um, so this cone will look something like this. and the dimensions are this is 15 this is 10 and this is 15 again and this angle is 60 degrees same as this angle here all right what happened I accidentally got this perpendicular constraint so we're just going to delete it okay and make this angle 60 degrees okay great 60 degrees and next thing is next dimension is this and this is going to be 22.5 and now we are going to make axis collinear actually this line collinear with axis again we are going to do this for every uh, for all revolves and then we're going to make this point and this circle 
a coincidence so that they sit on the same plane. Okay, exit sketch and now just do revolve which is also a shortcut on my mouse gesture wheel and it's really much faster when you Okay, now we need to create this holder no text, okay I just want to show you how it should look like I had some trouble creating it Okay, I need to do it this way. All right. Accidentally close it. So we are going to create this holder now like a casing or however so again we start on the right plane start sketch and now we're first of all we need um, con convert identities of this curve here and coincident these two points and add, add dimension to this it should be 75 now we create a line here and make this distance 107.6 this dimension is 50 and now we add these tangent arcs here and here and we also add a line connecting them which should be tangent to these uh, tangent arcs so that we get it on the same curve also we need to set this angle to 18 point two degrees uh, just as the angle of these bevel gears next thing we need to do is offset entities and these entities should be offset except for this line uh, this should be 10 millimeters offset so okay and we need to close this or close this sketch close this contour so that we can use it for extruded cut I actually made a mistake this should not be coincident with this but this should be coincident with it okay uh, now we can exit our sketch and we can extrude we'll uh, extrude it mid plane for 20 okay now we need to do a circular pattern there should be three and we'll use the axis one as axis of revolution um, then next thing we need to do is uh, create these six holes create these six holes and let me show you this way uh, these six holes uh, with chamfers and this larger hole one this larger one hole and this circle here and this hole here so we'll start 
by creating these holes I'll create plane on this face that is perpendicular to top face right and then on that plane I'll create a sketch uh, first I'm going to create this construction line And on its middle, I'm going to create this circle, which should be 10 millimeters in diameter. Now exit sketch. But we should first create this hole. Softworks is great because it allows you to I'll make lots of mistakes so this hole is 13 millimeters I exit sketch and then I extrude cut this hole not extrude the extrude cut it up to next so it will extrude cut to next surface now we can move this up as if we have done we were we have done it before this hole so now extrude cut this hole also up to next so that was the reason to first create this hole then this so that we don't need to bother with how deep this hole should be we can just click up to next next feature we need to create is chamfer on this hole it should be two millimeters and 45 degrees angle distance okay and do a circular pattern again around the axis one and make six of these holes okay Um, okay, we need to select cut extrude also so that it first creates a hole and then chamfer. So we have these six holes in this one, lar this larger one. And now we can move on to this part. Here we need to create a circle which is 15 diameter. exit sketch extrude and we can also use up to now we can use up to surface and select this surface so again we do not need to bother with distances here with dimensions again enter sketch here create circle of dimension 29 now Okay, exit sketch, extrude cut, up to next again. Okay, this part is done. So we have created this fixed gear. And now we can move on to move on to planet carriage. Planter gears carriage actually. But we'll call that part planet carriage. So We'll create a new part, here it is, and then rename it. It's quicker for to do it, just right click R. You know when you need to rename like 15 parts, it's much quicker to learn that shortcut. So planet carriage, no, I'm not sure about the spelling, but it does not matter really. so and you can also use right click and then search for this float or you can just press f to create this float not fix so we'll edit this component 
and uh, first thing we're going to do is on top plane we are going to create a sketch which will consist of, of one circle which will be 37.5 millimeters exit sketch and now extrude it but we are going to extrude it in both directions in first direction it will be 49.55 millimeters and in direction 2 it will be 15.15 uh, .15 millimeters click ok and so let me show you what are we doing now so we are creating this carriage and we just created this not that but actually we created uh, we started creating this part here so we are creating a s cylinder here and then creating these two and then creating this cone shape and then making these holes and then ex extruding this from the end so now we need to create some reference geometry for for this angle it's again going to be the 18.2 degrees angle we're going to do it in front plane so we create a center line from origin and make it horizontal and then make one more center line here which will be 18.2 degrees you can exit this sketch and now we can use this these lines as guides for planes so we go at plane also you can find this plane under reference reference geometry plane so we can do this thing too so i select this line and this point and it will create a plane which contains this point and it's perpendicular to this line I'll click OK and then on that plane I'm going to do also I'm now you can use this button just sketch and here we need a circle of again 37.5 millimeters exit and extrude that to 50 actually not 50 it should be 29.71 and it should have this angle of 5 degrees okay now on this surface we again create sketch with a circle uh, with the dimension of okay not not circle undo and we create a dimension of 20 exit sketch again extrude but now extrude it for 25 25.57 millimeters and on the end we create sketch here again with a circle which is again 37.5 millimeters exit sketch and extrude and this extrude will be six millimeters okay and now you can guess that we are going to do circular pattern okay 
of this these three boss extrudes which represent these three cylinders okay uh, we are going to create two copies around the okay I, I first need to create axes just as we had axes for all of these gears I'm now going to create axes for this so get reference geometry axis and to and cylindrical conical face and create axis there so we can use it again for all our revolves and our revolves and circular patterns everything that has something to do with circles so circular pattern again uh, select these three create just two copies around axis axis one okay uh, mistake all right so i forgot that middle part okay now just rebuild to remove that triangle next thing we're going to create is this small cylinder and then create this conical face do a sketch with a circle which is diameter 50 exit sketch and extrude it for six millimeters already typed in and now we are just going to create on right plane we are just going to use these edges and this middle point for revolve exit sketch and do revolve so again using our axis we created a moment ago and we get that conical shape okay next thing we need to do is create those holes we're going to do it this way so first uh, create a plane which is normal to this face and use our front plane to make it f uh, at 45 degrees angle so let me just switch this to first we select front plane and make it 45 degrees and then we se select this face Okay. and now on this plane we are going to create a circle which is going to be 10 millimeters in diameter and 13 millimeters away from the origin and it's going to be horizontal to origin We can exit this sketch now. Oh, again, I forgot to, to create this hole, but it's not a problem. I create a sketch here and create a circle. Of diameter 24. Exit sketch and extrude cut it into this uh, planet carriage with a depth of 50 millimeters okay and now again move it before we start making these holes so that we can use extruded cut up to next and now we're going to do that uh, extruded cut up to next and now we do not need to think about depth of that hole 
Okay, and create chamfer for this one. Again, two millimeters, 45 degrees. Create circular pattern. Now it will be four holes. In respect to axis, again I forgot it got extrude, but not a problem. Here we go, and those are four holes. And now we need to create these two. We are going to create another plane which is on this face and perpendicular to right face. Okay. And on that plane, we are going to create a sketch with a circle at the origin. Again, diameter 10 millimeters. We exit that sketch and do an extruded cut. Now, uh, we can't use up to next because this is connected to here. Now, we need to use up to surface and select this surface. As you can see, uh, this hole is interfacing with this lower part of the large hole. So because of that, we needed to select that surface. Again, we select the chamfer, same chamfer, two millimeters, 45 degrees. And again, do a circular pattern. I around the axis one. Now we select cut extrude and create just two holes. Okay. Now it starts to get shape. We can see that we just need to create this part now. Okay, now on this Surface we create sketch and again simple circle of diameter. Um, let me see, let me see. This diameter should be twenty six. Yes, twenty six and we exit yes 26 okay uh we exit this sketch again extrude in this project it's, there's a lots of extruded cylinders So again, we create sketch here with a circle of dimension 40. Exit and extrude that for 15 millimeters. Okay, and then here we create a sketch with a circle. Now you can really see how useful it is to use these shortcuts because imagine all, always trying to hit all these buttons here. So pretty neat feature. Again, 15. Now do sketch here with yet another circle. This circle is diameter 20. And distance from origin is 40. And we can exit this sketch and extrude cut it. Again, up to next, we don't need to bother with dimension. And we can do a circular pattern. I could certainly create eight. I could certainly create shortcut for that circular pattern, but I don't use it as often as it's used in this project. OK, 
Okay, now in now in here we create yet another sketch with a circle, just with diameter of fifty-five. Exit sketch and difference is that this cut will be done with thirty degrees. And with depth of five millimeters. Okay, and now we're going to create text here. First, we need to put one line. I'm going to use midpoint line because it's easy to use it here and make it along 40 millimeters and construction geometry and now I can click this text button and use this as a guide so now we can write down some text and we can add it just some regular uh, just some regular text stuff like font, bold, justify, stuff like that. And you're going to create this at 5 millimeters, for example. Size of each other can try 6, and everything fits, it's great. So we are going to use 6 millimeters. Okay. Again, we Exit sketch and extrude cut that for just two millimeters. Okay, just to give it some appearance. And that's it. We created a planet carriage. So it's same thing as here. Now let's rebuild and exit edit component and now let's edit planet gears so now we again need to create uh, to add that cone here and that hole so dimensions are again we are going to do that on the right plane and I create a sketch, so we need a line here, here, oops, undo, don't want it to, okay, right, now dimensions are again, it is five millimeters from this edge here, It is now 15 millimeters deep and this angle will now be 45 degrees. We exit sketch and do a, a revolve cut around provided axis. Okay, and we get that nice hole. Uh, next thing we need to create a cone on the other side right plane again create sketch line okay just something like this this line also right again 45 degrees here mm, this it will be 11.57 now in the original project in the original project every dimension has a clearance so every mate will be left with a, I believe two millimeters clearance so you can see here it's two millimeter clearance between this hole and this shaft it's two millimeters clearance and everywhere because this model is uh, 
created for 3D printing, so it's much easier to print models with larger clearances. So because of that, we're not getting some round numbers. And this is 30 millimeters. Okay, put this and this as coincidence so that they are in the same plane and it's fully defined. So, okay. And we now do exit sketch and revolve around our axis. You can see a lot of repetitive job here, but that's how it is. So sketch here again, circle with dimension 24. So you, if you remember, that shaft was 20 millimeters and this hole is 24 millimeters, so 2 millimeters clearance on both sides. Exit sketch. And something very important to think about when you're creating some model to leave enough clearance for everything. So up to next. Okay, and that's the hole. And now we need to create uh, in those holes on the plant gear and now there are five of these okay again create plane here which is perpendicular to not that to top plane right and there create sketch again we're going to use line to guide us here and you can also use this quick click here so that you again do not need to search for this check but checkbox create circle on the middle or that line again diameter is 10 millimeters so we exit sketch and extrude the cut up to next okay and we create a chamfer or wrong side here two millimeters 45 degrees everything the same Okay, and now we create a circular pattern around our axis. Just this time it's five holes and we need to select this cut extrude. Okay, so we get these five holes. I believe they were just used to remove some material for 3D printing to make it cheaper. Or I don't know what for there, maybe for, for appearance. So now we are going to focus on output gear. One first. So create sketch, oh, okay, wrong. We need to enter edit component first. So here and then click this surface, enter edit sketch and create a circle. Diameter is 20 millimeters. We exit sketch and create um, not extruded cut, we extrude it for 50 millimeters. This shaft goes into planet carriage, and on the other side. We create sketch again with a circle of diameter 25 now and exit sketch extrude. Uh, this one is extruded for 25 millimeters. Okay, and now we are going to join these two here. So this goes to here 
we are going to um, mate this to So we need to mate this to concentric, okay. And now that's it. Now we are going to join these two components. We are going to enter the edit component to out gear one, and then go to insert features, join, and join it with this com with this component. So now these two are joined. Okay, one thing I forgot to do was uh, to also align this output gear 2 with output gear 1 uh, so that they cannot rotate independently so I'll get the output gear to top plane and output gear one top plane and output gear uh, two top plane mated Okay, so now these need to spin together and we need to just join them again. Again, insert features join and select these two okay and now it should work just unfix exits all right uh, now we need to mate this with a fixed gear First, we need to mate this concentric. And we need to mate these two with distance mate. So we need to set distance mate two millimeters and flip this. Also, we need to unflip the damage, so that's how it should stay there. And now we can add a uh, planet gears to the planet carriage by creating a concentric mate here, and also creating a distant mate distance made between these two planes okay having some trouble here we use this plane and this plane and made them together but in distant made with two millimeter clearance okay and the other one should be mated automatically because it's a circular uh, circular pattern around the axis of this uh, of this carriage and they should move together also okay we should now just mate Ok, 
Okay, we should now just make this face to this face concentric. Okay, and this surface to this surface with a distance of two millimeters. And just flip it. Okay. And now let's align these gears. We need to take care of which is the original one. So this one and which is a copy. So these two make a mechanical mate uh, gear and this one is 81. So it needs to be 16 teeth and this one needs to be 20 teeth. We'll just see is this reverse or not. So yes, it is reverse. Mm, this should not be reverse. Okay, now let's check it. Okay, it works. You just need to take care of which is the original and which is the copy. Uh, now let's align this. Let's line the output gear uh, to the planet gear. Again, uh, watch for which one is which. So this is 16 teeth and this is 10 teeth. And let's check that it works. Yes, it works. So This is epicyclic gear reducer. Okay, so we will now do a motion study. First, we need to set up a camera angles. I want f at the beginning, I want this angle. So important thing is to disable this auto key makes it easier to work so you go right click and replace key and now we had set this key to this position now in four seconds we can add new key that key I want to look something like this so now I can go and just replace key and place another key at eight seconds i want it to be something like this again i go replace key and i can copy and paste that key at 10 seconds for it to stay in that position so you can see how it rotates now next thing thing uh we need to add is a motor we want to rotate this face in direction um no i want to use this direction and in respect to this i want it to rotate and i want it to rotate at 10 revolutions per minute it's slow enough to be noticeable okay now let's just recalculate it and we can see how it will look like in the end great now we can press a save animation and choose our window size Okay, 
select name type of file everything as you wish I'll just select 30 frames per second and click save yes I want to replace okay and we need to recalculate data so now it is calculating all the positions of this model and after that it will render all frames and this is the resulting video we got thanks for watching and goodbye